Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. I got a little Pearl of Dance for you. All right, we're going to be doing trade talk again. We just did Jacob Chickman. You might want to check that one out. I'm still talking to people about that. How people value players is amazing. We did our mock uh, Matthews trade, and I get a lot of people asking for to finish that series off. I'm going to be doing that over the whole summer. Again, that's not about is Matthews getting traded. I just want to, we were having arguments about the value of Matthews in Toronto. And uh, I thought, let's do a video and see what everybody thinks. And that was fun. We have Melk, we just did a Melk and free agency video call, oh, not too long ago. Guess what? And uh, when I did that, people were like, he's not leaving Pittsburgh. Looks like he's leaving Pittsburgh. So as it turns out, if you look at my videos, actually, I'm usually quite accurate in identifying where team players may go, where and into which teams and all of those sort of things like that. I just I spend an inhuman amount of time thinking about hockey, a divorce worthy amount of time, and I bring it to you. That's what I do here. Okay, so today we're gonna look at somebody who I think is so varied in value it's crazy and that is Jesse Puglia Hardy out of the Edmonton Oilers I have a insider uh, uh, article also from from somebody who is I have actually did a video with before and I admire a lot out of the Edmonton Journal about the basically saying that Puglia Hardy was not going to be in Edmonton anymore now, Jesse Pugliarvi himself, if you don't know, is a 24-year-old. We'll look at his stats. He's a 24-year-old player who many who don't pay attention to analytics don't like. Many who do pay, t- pay attention, all, all that do pay attention to analytics, love. For me, my eye test has always said he's a great two-way player. That, that pans out well with the analytics because he is. He's not a sexy player. He doesn't hit people a lot. Um, he doesn't look like he, he doesn't block shots in a fancy way, mostly because he's always in position and he doesn't have to. Um, but the biggest problem with Jesse Pugliarvi is he's kind of snake bit offensively. And whoever's going to pick him up gets, to, if they see, if they're an analytics team and we're going to be looking at about seven teams that are looking at him, are probably smacking their lips thinking they're going to be able to get this guy for like a second round pick and he's going to turn out to a guy like another guy that I said is going to that got picked up for nothing and I was saying at the time that everybody's going to regret it in the chew skin. He reminds me of him an awful lot out of the Colorado ring Colorado Avalanche. So let's look at why Jesse Pugliari could be traded. Where he could be traded to. We'll look at Jesse Pugliarvi's stats and all that. And uh, we'll look at what the Edmonton Oilers could get back. Now, they're talking about getting a second round pick. I think they would prefer a player if they could. They're not real, they're not anywhere near rebuilding mode. But also, they're probably just looking at whatever value they can get for him, which is really too bad. But that's I'll leave it at that. Okay, let's first look at the article. All part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network and the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show. I'll be doing a draft, live draft, tomorrow, tomorrow, which is the 7th. And for for so you might want to be part of that. Sub up and you can be part of that. Should be fun. All right, here it is. It's out of the Edmonton Journal. And it's David Staples. David Staples is a writer that has been with the Edmonton Journal for a long time. And he basically won't post, he would not post something that doesn't have any validity to it. The Edmonton Journal would look terrible. Uh, They have a high high regard for being accurate. Jesse Pugliarvi to be traded, question mark. Both sides are okay with moving on. Oilers Insiders reports. It looks like he is insider Tom Gazzola on the Oil Stream podcast with Dustin Nielsen is report that Jeff, that he's been told Jesse Pulley Harvey is on the way out of Edmonton. 
Uh, Tom Gazzola is a, quite the insider. And uh, he, again, he usually isn't ac inaccurate when it comes to Edmonton Oilers stuff at all. He would be very surprised if he ends up in an Oilers uniform next year. So, yeah. Uh, here's a few things about this. Jesse Pugliarvi is, uh, has once before left the organization unhappy when he was really young. He matured a little bit. He went to, back to Sweden. He ended up coming back. Uh, played fairly well. And now he's got a contract coming up where he has to be signed as a restricted free agent. And I think the dollar values aren't matching here for what the Edmonton Oilers think he is and what he thinks he is of himself. It's pretty much what's coming up. So let's look at Jesse to begin to start off with. Uh, he is a big boy, six foot four. 200 pounds, doesn't play super big. He's in the sense that he's aggressive, but he does use his body well in the corners. He gets people off of pucks and all of those sort of things like that. He was a fourth overall, and that muddles this quite a bit in 2016 because when a player's picked that high, the expectations are extremely high. And when they don't happen, quite often what happens, especially the fan base gets on him in Edmonton Oilers, uh, Edmonton Oilers fans are very knowledgeable. They know who they are, and they're very, they can be very hard on young players who don't pan out. So there's a lot of reasons why he might not be happy. A lot of players have been shunned out of Edmonton, and he just looks like he's going to be one of them right now. So, okay, he has... Uh, his contract right now was $1.175 million. His base salary of one point four and a half. So his cap hit is $1.175 though. So he, he needs a qualifying offer right now, which would lead him to about one point two and a half, And that's probably what they're asking. And he's not happy with that. He's probably looking at about two, two and a half at least. Two and a half million, something like that. He thinks he's a top six guy. Apparently, also in the article, it talks about how he's not very happy with where he's positioned in the lineup. He wants to play top six. And they they leave, they put him up there for a short time, but then it doesn't work out. There's also talk that McDavid and Dreisaitl don't like playing with him, which I find odd. But nobody has actually verified that. It's just been some talk out there that that was the case. Okay, he's got 36 points in 65 games. Now, if you're a plus-minus guy, it was a plus 22. I'm not. I'm not going to put too much stock on it. But I do find it kind of funny that people that are anti Pulley Harvey say he's not good defensively, which is not true. Um, and, he, and he can't put the puck in the net. That is true. He had 14 goals in 65 games for a guy with his talent that plays with uh, McDavid and Dreisaitl on a regular basis, or did anyway, is off and on. 14 goals is not good. No doubt about it, he was snake bit, not confident, or something of that nature. Now, anybody who follows analytics, anybody who sees the type of player that he is, would probably really like to take at least a shot at him. And honestly, if I was a team out there, I'd be like smacking my lips right now. That's a guy that, this is a guy that you might be able to get for a second overall pick. I also want to mention that uh, the Edmonton Oilers really need goaltenders out there. So I think that's one thing that they would be trying to get. Uh, Mike Smith, their number one goaltender, there's a really good chance he's not going to be able to play again. He may even retire right now. Also, even if he doesn't, He's 38 years old. He's roughed up. He's, he's had a 40, sorry. He's 40 years old. Uh, Stuart Skinner would be their backup right now. He's 23 and doesn't have all that much experience because Koskinen, their backup from last year, took off to Europe. So, all right. So the, that, with that in mind, let's look at the first team that I'm looking at here. And that is the New York Rangers. Um, I'm doing this in honor of Mark... Brown, sorry, 
thought had to think for a second. A guy that was re a regular on my live program, he's always talking in my chat in Facebook. You can search me on Facebook, Perlo Wisdom on Facebook. And New York Rangers fans, if you have a problem with what I'm about to say, comment in the comment section, sub up to my channel and tell me all about it. Jesse Pugliarby, great two-way guy. The offer that Mark had in there, and I've heard a rumored to be true, is for Alexander Gorgiev. Alexander Gorgiev is also a restricted free agent. He had a brutal year last year, 0.898. He's still fairly young, though, at 26 years old. He has looked good at times, not great at others. Mostly, to me, not great than good. Um, I'm not a fan of him. I, I wouldn't do this deal, but maybe the Oilers would do something like that. At the very least... I would be asking for another pick on top of that to get a guy like Jesse Pugliarvi. However, they're, they, they've, they've uh, put his value so low now because of the way he's been utilized in Edmonton that they may not have to. So now here's the reason why this is my least likely team that would take Pugliarvi. And the reason why that is is I get the idea that I, I get from Drury by the decisions he's made, such as Barkley Goudreau, who's not an analytics darling by any stretch. Uh, he's actually fairly poor defensively, below average. Um, he blocks shots because he has to. He's out of position a lot. But he's willing to, which is good. Uh, to getting Samuel Blay in a second for Bushnevich, who was an amazing two-way winger. Um, we're getting Ryan Reeves who, you know, it's just, this screams, we want to hurt people. That's the value. Ryan Reeves could hurt people physically. He, he hurts the Rangers on the ice, but he hurts people physically. So, and he, he's good in the room and all that, blah, blah, blah. So leads me to believe that a guy like Pooley Harvey, who's six foot four is not overly aggressive, not aggressive. Plays his position fantastic um, and could bring up offense. Just wouldn't be something that he'd be looking for or to take a chance on. However, maybe to get rid of Gorgiev, he gives him a shot. And he, they have Lafreniere on the right side. When I saw Lafreniere play on the right side last year, he didn't look good to me. I think they mo he's best on the left, which is why we had some discussion in one of our videos about the possibility of either somebody getting traded there on the left side because they're so stacked on the left side. However, you could put him, you could put Jesse Pugliarvi up there with Panarin. Panarin, uh, another thing you need to know about Jesse Pugliarvi is everybody that played with Jesse Pugliarvi got more shots when they were playing with him. And I think that would be a big thing for Panarin. Panarin's passing the puck too much. He's overpassing. And if you had a guy like Pooley Harvey there, maybe he starts getting more shots, forcing him to shoot. So I like it. I mean, I would do it if I was a Rangers all day. But tell me what you think, New York Rangers fans. Would you give up a Gorgia for a Jesse Pooley Harvey? And even if you had to give up another pick, which it doesn't sound like you have to, which is really gross, and you're getting an amazing deal here, but maybe you don't think so. Maybe you don't think so. Next, Seattle Kraken. And I love this for Seattle Kraken. They have like they have four second round picks. Uh, there's other guys that they could also, if the Oilers are really looking for players instead of picks. Maybe, maybe Drieger, but at three and a half million, I don't know. Maybe Chris Drieger. There they could they they can find another backup. They don't need to use Chris Drieger. Um, somebody like that. Uh, I would love Carson Soucy. He's from Edmonton. He's great to a great defensive defenseman. Doesn't cost much. I would do it for that. But I think Seattle, they are rebuilding a slower way than Vegas. However, why not? Anybody who's rebuilding would like to speed up the rebuild. And I think getting Jesse Pugliarby for a second round pick to give him a good shot on the right side 
By the way, Ron Francis would appreciate a guy like Jesse Poyarvi, I think. Solid two-way guy. Ron Francis is one of the best two-way forwards that ever played the game. And I think he would see the talent. He drafted guys like Matthew Beneers, awesome two-way guy. Jordan Eberle, great two-way guy, who isn't overly physical. In fact, I could see Puyarvi turning into something like Jordan Eberle down the road. So he could work out really well with Yanni Gord and Jared McCann, give them some more scoring threat. I, I love it. I love this deal. I would do it, especially if it's only for a second. I would want second and Carson Soucy myself at least. I wouldn't be doing this deal if I was the Edmonton Oilers, but at least, please, get an absolute steal, I think. What do you think, Seattle fans? Would you be willing to give up a second-round pick and possibly Carson Soucy for, or maybe William Bolden, God, please no, but something like that. Maybe Chris Trigger for a young 24-year-old, six foot four, 200-pounder that can play both ways. Would you be into that? Tell me, sub yourself up and tell me in the comment section if that would be something you would do. Next, San Jose Sharks. And I love this for the San Jose Sharks. It doesn't appear that they have any plans on rebuilding anytime soon. So why not get a guy, a two, like I said, a great two-way guy to go with a lot of other two-way guys they have there. Thomas Hurdle, Timu Meyer, Logan Kocher, you know, guys like that. I think Logan actually isn't the greatest defensively, but he's 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 solid physical guy. And this is a young enough guy that can kind of speed up, make it. It looks like they're going to just try to put as many young players as they can in the raw roster and on the roster and hope and cross their fingers that they can get something done. I don't like the what San Jose is doing, and they just got uh, a new. General manager and ex Edmonton Oiler, actually, in Greer. So we'll see which direction he plans on going. But I don't think they hired him to rebuild, to tell you the honest truth. So what would you give back? I mean, I know San Jose should not want to give up picks. And they don't have a second this year, so it would have to be next year. But if you got a Jesse Pugliarvi with the second pick, you're doing good. You're doing good already. So you're going to draft a guy in, with your second pick this year. And, you know, three years down the road, you might have you might have a guy as good as Jesse Pulley Harvey. Or you can just have Jesse Pulley Harvey right now. Another thing you could do is maybe uh, Alexander Barabanov back to Edmonton at two and a half million. Personally, I wouldn't do that. I like I'd be working on I'd be working for depth. As much as I possibly can, Barabanov could play the left side. Pugliarvi could play the right re between Logan Couture, and that's not a bad second line. And, uh, you know, then Matt, Matt Nieto moves down uh, to maybe a fourth-line role or what have you, or maybe right out of the lineup, which adds depth. If San Jose is going to win, I think they're going to have to win with depth, much depth guys as they can possibly have. So, what do you think, San Jose Sharks fans? Jesse Pugliarvi, again, sub yourself up, tell me what you think. Analytic Starlin, big guy, plays well defense, extremely well defensively, if you believe I my eye test says so. Analytics says so. It's not aggressive, really, but a hell of a player for a second-round pick as far as I'm concerned. What do you guys think? Next, Montreal Canadiens. And... I think this is a mo with something that the Montreal Canadiens might consider mostly because Gordon is not, not their general manager, but he runs the show quite a bit. They got Hughes in there as a general manager. To me, he's sort of a, a PR guy. Um, he's good with contracts and all that kind of stuff like that. But Gordon, I think, is really running the show here. And Gordon is a huge analytics guy. I'm positive. He would know the value of a guy like Jesse Pulia Harvey, especially for just a second round pick. I mean, they could maybe give Ryan Paling in a second round pick. For some reason, I think the Ryan Paling, where is he from again? 
Minnesota. It's close, closer to Alberta. It's closer to home, though. It's just somebody that the Edmonton Oilers would like. It just I don't know why. I, I, I mean, I don't like this deal at all. Because I think I'd be keeping Puliarvi if I could. For sure. No doubt about it. But I'm sure Gordon would find a place for him here. I know you got Josh Anderson. He can play the left side. I don't think Terrell Ann's going to be there. There's going to be a lot of moving parts here for Montreal. So when you look at their depth chart right now, it doesn't really tell you the whole story. Mike Hoffman, you're not. He, there's no way in God's green earth that uh, Gordon is going to re-sign Hoffman. And he's absolutely diabolically bad five on five. Um, he'll probably try to move him if he can, and he can fit up there with Suzuki and Caulfield. That'd be a nice little line. That would, and that, it'd be a nice line with Dvorak and whoever goes in there. Anybody like that. Like, it, it's you could put Gallagher on on. Oh, sorry. You know, I guess he doesn't play the left side. But I I would just take him and worry about everything else later. Myself, I just love two way guys like him. Like I said, he looks like another Nichushkin in the making. Tell me what you think, Montreal Canadian fans. Would you like a guy like Jesse Puliharvey? Um, I would trade him for Josh Anderson straight up easy. And I know a lot of people are going to kill me for saying that. But he, jo Josh Anderson isn't the greatest defensively. He's got a big contract. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I would do it. Next, the New York Islanders. And... Quite simply, I know that Lamorello is not an analytics guy at all. He doesn't care about analytics. Anybody that he has in there that is analytically strong, it's just by, like Casey Zizekas, for instance, it's just by accident, pretty much. Uh, Ryan Pulak and Pelic, yeah, they're both amazing defensemen, for sure. But I think they'll do, they would consider this because Anthony Beauvillier need, wants to be moved and they're going to need another winger. I'm not saying they'll do it for Anthony Beauvillier. If I was the Edmonton Oilers, I would do this. If I could fit him under the cap, I like Anthony Beauvillier. But I think they would rather move him. I've heard him going to maybe Montreal and all kinds of things. But if he's going to be moved, I could see them going for Jesse Pugliarvi uh, to play with Barzal, um, you know, move, move Palmieri over to the left side, sit Parise, honestly, to tell you the honest truth, at this stage of his career. But they want to get younger, but they don't want to rebuild. And I just think it's a very good possibility that they'd be able to give up a pick. Uh, maybe a guy like uh, Salo or something like that depending on how much they value him. I, I hate saying this because uh, I think Puy Harvey's worth way more than what he's going to give up. They're going to give up their second rounder in 2022 and a prospect or something like that. I, you know, I could see them being interested in that. What do you think, Islanders fans? Good two-way guy, big, solid two-way kid who's got a lot of upside. I mean, if you picked up a player like that with your second pick, second rounder, wouldn't you be happy? I know I would be. I would do this deal in a heartbeat. A heartbeat. But would you? And tell me why. Down in the comment section, Islanders fan. Sub up to my channel, which means you got to go over to YouTube and search Pearl of Wisdom because you can't do it on Facebook if you're on Facebook. If you're not on Facebook, just sub up to my channel. Comment and tell me. You can tell me whatever you want. You can tell me I'm crazy, blah, blah, blah. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. All right, next, the Detroit Red Wings. And basically, if you know a guy named Gravite, he's the one that showed that brought this up to me, that, uh, that it would be a move that they could do. But it was for Chikrin. However, I think... Uh, it was Chikrin was part of the deal, but it got my wheels turning. And then I heard a rumor that it was Pulley RV to the Detroit Red Wings for Philip Zadina. Because, you know, there's a guy that's struggling and they're almost the same age. Zadina's a little younger. He's struggling in Detroit. 
They figure if you move him to Edmonton, you know, it changes scenery, all that. Zadina's biggest problem is confidence. He gets really down on himself, apparently, like crazy down on himself. And nobody can seem to stop it. So I guess in Edmonton, they think that they are going to be able to change him somehow. And Pulley Harvey will go over there in Detroit and just look just beautiful. I would hate this trade. Unless Philip Zadina can turn it around somehow. You know, it's maybe. I wouldn't do it. I don't I don't want an iffy player like Zadina when you already got a fantastic two-way young player in Pooley Harvey. I wouldn't do it. But I wouldn't be surprised if Edmonton does it. Would you do it, Detroit Red Wings fan? Would you trade Pooley Harvey for Philip Zadina straight up? I guess that's what the deal would be. Gosh. Anyways, you know my thoughts. I would do it in a heartbeat. He could play with Suter and Barana. That would be a wonderful second line. You know, Raymond Larkin, Bertuzzi, you got two. Raymond is, is fantastic already defensively. Um, Dylan Larkin always has been. You know, seems that Stevie Eisman pays a lot of attention to analytics as well. And he just knows it. He doesn't need the analytics to know who's a good two-way guy. I think he'll be smacking his lips all over Pooley Harvey. And if this deal happens, Edmonton Oilers are going to look stupid. Uh, I hope not, actually. I he, Whether or not Philip Zadina goes wherever he goes, I just hope he gets his gets he, he has some a mental block or, you know, some secu- insecurity issues. I really hope he gets over that because as a person, you know, it sucks being like in that really bad negative state, like a guy like Philip Zadina sounds like he is. So I hope he gets that he gets out of that, regardless of where he goes. All right, next, Colorado Avalanche, and finally, and I have this as the team most likely to do this trade, and the reason why is if there ever was a, the, an analytics based team. Who probably match who the analytics match their eye test? It's Joe Sackick and the Colorado Avalanche. Their two way forwards are insane. Every single player that played last year, besides maybe Kadri, was a little iffy defensively, and Andre Burakovsky. But Valerie Nichushkin, who I'm sure they're going to sign, and if you've been watching the whole video, I mentioned this before. When Valerie Nichuski got Juskin got traded from Dallas, I was saying that's going to be one of the best moves we've seen in a very long time, and it turns out to be true. Jesse Pugliarvi is almost like Nichuskin too, the second version of Nichuskin, maybe with more offense. And I'm sure, I'm sure Joe Sakic knows all about it, and all if all he has to do is give up a second round pick. He doesn't have one. My gosh, I don't, uh, he'll find one somehow. Or he'll, like, they got prospects coming out of the yin yang. He could drop a, a second round version prospect here. Let's look at some of the players you could give up here for, for him. Um, basically, he plays right side. So Logan O'Connor would move down with Newhook and Cogliano. Um, no, and then you have Nichuskin there as well, who can play the left side. So you got Lekin and Newhook and O'Connor. That's disgusting. And then you'd have Pulley Harvey, JT Comfer, and Nichuskin if you wish to do it that way. However, they way to mix, mix and match it. It's just insane. Every one of their players pretty much is amazing both ways. Two-way players, possession drivers, everything incredible. So they got, oh yeah, they got Cout that they could give up for him. Uh, there's a whole, they got a whole bunch of UFA guys here that is not, are not going to be coming back. But I would say Cout, maybe. It, he, he hasn't really made it in the minors, so I, I would say maybe that would be my guy. Where the heck do they have him? Do they have him in the lineup already? Maybe Maltsev. It's another guy. He's 18 years old. Bottom pairing big guy. Put him in there. Yeah, there's so many guys that they could put they could they could do here. Where the heck is Cout? They don't have him here. 
Can somebody tell me there in the comment section why he's not in the minors lineup? Is he loaned? No. He doesn't go on prospects? Weird. He's just totally gone. Can you tell me or why he's not there anywhere in the lineup or anything? Like, But anyways, he's a big guy. Plays fast. Uh, it's somebody that Edmonton Oilers, kind of player that just seems that, that they would like for some reason. I don't know why they like the players that they like there in Edmonton, but and maybe a third round pick. So something like that. A prospect and a third round pick, and they get a freaking beautiful two way guy. Would you do that in Colorado? I'll send this over to you. Uh, I've been doing a lot because uh, for Colorado here. And uh, because there's a lot of movements that could be made for Colorado, even though they won the cup. Sakic's not a guy that generally just lets things be. He tries to get better and better all the time. All right. That's my full 42. Pulley RV to a lot of teams. Tell me what you think in the comment section. Sub yourself up. Be part of the family. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you, Kate. Bye.